What is up, Scrubfam? I'm here doing commentary over a live game that I played last night. This game was against my buddy Thomas Ingle. He's playing Red Blue SS3. I'm playing Apes and Taxes. First off, before the video gets started, give a shout out to my sponsor, Bearded Collectibles, Alec Pastrana, best shop, shop owner on the planet. If you're looking at your shield product, get it from Alec Pastrana. He has the best prices, best customer service. You'll truly enjoy it every single time you purchase from Alec. And we're going to go ahead and get into this video. So the first thing is the camera angle. I'm aware that this camera angle is not the best camera angle. And the subsequent videos, the ones that will come after this video, I adjusted the camera angle. But I really wanted to get this game up uh, because it was actually a really close game between myself and Thomas. So he opens double blue. And when you're playing as apes and taxes and you see that, so the first thing is like, I see a Zeno, so I know he's playing red blue. So now I get to kind of take advantage of him if I can get the lock in time. So I'm going to start off with a Bardock on my turn. Taking a life. And then I'm going to swap into the Goten here. And then I get to attack first, which is big. So I'm actually going to go ahead and attack with the Bardock before swapping. And then he takes one. Now I'll swap and I'll play the Goten. So now we're going to look at the top three with this busted ability. And he plays a sensu beam before anything else while I'm still trying to figure out my stuff. But it's that's one thing against playing against blue decks is if the opponent does have sensu beans, it makes things kind of an uphill battle for me. And then I have to kind of just change the pace of play the way I play the matchup itself. And then right now, since I have another Goten in hand, I'm just going to let this one sit on the board and then not really worry, worry too much about protecting it or trying to go off since he played a sensu beam. And then as you can see, we have pretty much all the components we need next turn for the lock. As long as we can awaken in time, which I think we'll be able to. He plays at Trunks. He's attacking the Goten, which is smart on his part because he's going to be able to get the card for free. And then just go ahead and kill the Goten without getting closer to awakening me. Here he awakens. And then if he swings lead... He's going to give me the extra card. If he doesn't, he denies himself a card, so I'm pretty certain he's going to go ahead and swing. Uh, that's one thing that was weird about this play, is he should have just attacked the Intensifying Power Trunks at my leader to deny me the card, and then awaken, and then swing the leader at Goten. But now, since he played it this way, he just went ahead and gave me an extra card. Now he's fluting back the Trunks. Shields are up. Here, it, we're probably going to have to look to charge a blue. Unfortunately, though, it's going to have to be a Sensu Bean instead of like a ready to fight Sun Goku. But everything right now is in our hand. We can go ahead and get things started with trying to get the lock in place. So we're going to go ahead and take the life. Value Gene coming out for free. And then now we'll go ahead and get our Goten attack started. This is a good top three to look at. We're going to go ahead and check back in our hand. Because we already have it unyielding. We're actually going to go ahead and take another Goten. Because the way our hand is set up right now, we'll be able to deploy multiple Gotens this turn. Which is just going to allow us to get through the deck even faster. Which is exactly what you want. So here we pop open the extra energy. So we can go ahead and play Bardock again. Which will guarantee the Awaken for us. But he has another Sensu Bean. Which again can be pretty frustrating. But either way, it's fine. We're going to get everything we want out of this turn. So we go ahead and play a Bardock take a life and then now we'll get, we're going to get extra value out of this turn because we get to untap two after we go ahead and get the value out of the gotens and then after we i think we're going to end up over roaming here oh look at this another bean we went ahead and actually went it took the backbone super combo so we can go ahead and put some pressure on the leader So we're going to go straight to 20. Honestly, because we're trying to fill up the discard pile for the Force Ejection so we can overwhelm it this turn. And then he went ahead and comboed an Unbreakable. So now we're going to go ahead and play Force Ejection Mass Saiyan because we're down on energy. So now this is going to help us set up the lock for the next turn because it's going to allow us to make sure we can keep him at 3 energy as opposed to him ever getting ahead. Now we awaken for full value. I love the Vegeta leader because like once you do this, you'll be able to untap two, and then you can also just essentially untap another one with his ability. 
So we're going to go ahead and start setting things up for later in the game. So we're going to go play a planet. This is going to be part of our end game here, getting a planet on board to start deploying apes. But the way we're going to set this up is since we don't have a second copy of Mass Hand, we get to go tutor it, which is the, another brilliant thing about playing planet in this deck. And, you know, the reason why I always, I was stressing to Danny when he was playing the deck itself, making sure you had it, is because it's like, now you always have the card that you want, no matter what. So now we're going to swing with leader. Activate auto, and then we get to recharge. And I think we're just actually going to go ahead and put a Bardock back down. He being this turn. Then here we go. Nope, there we go. See, another planet. So look at that extra value that we got just because of Vegeta's ability on this turn. Like, it's not only just good for setting up this lock component that we're trying to do, but it's also just amazing at just giving you an additional energy every single turn that you get to use. So I love the turns where you get to do the untap two and then swing, use the auto. Because now we got to play two planets, we got the tutor, we got to get super combos, like the shields are up for us. There's nothing he can do on his turn for three energy if you're used to playing against Blue Red SS3. So right now our board is two Gotens, a Gene, and then with a one planet. And now it's his turn. Things get a little awkward for him because it's like he has to figure out a way to play this deck with only three energy. And then he has to be concerned about the lock that's going to be coming potentially next turn. And now we're going to go ahead and start protecting our Gotens. Main reason why is because if you can keep these on the board, you're just going to get through your deck so much faster than you would without it. And so protecting these when you can do it at little to no cost to you is a highly valuable thing. So you actually hard cast a Raging Spear Sun, so, Sun go on. So that's the issue that, I, like I was saying, that people are going to have against this deck. Is when you're stuck on three energy, like there's only so much you can do, especially in the SS3 decks. That's why this deck is so well positioned against SS3. Against everything else, though, I mean, I think in the aggro matchups, it's interesting. I do think Trunk Storm is just a better blue-yellow deck. But this deck just is so neat and just provides such a wrinkle to the game that it's heck of fun to play. And it creates an interesting game. Like, these games go long and they go pretty deep. They're really close. And, like, locking out your opponent is probably one of the coolest things you can do in this game. And it's just such a neat control archetype. So we're going to go ahead and hardcast the Force Ejection Mass saying Swing Leader. We're going to end up having an Unyielding here. So we're actually going to swing with Goten instead. So we can just use the unyielding to get more value. So we actually just make a 15k attacker. We took the ready to fight because we just want to make sure that we have a, a blue source. If we want to charge later, we can. If So it allows us to pick up the sense of being if we need to at any point in the game. Unyielding, pop open a yellow. So just 15k. So that's, again, getting the extra value out of the Goten is like highly important. You want to be able to threaten as often as you can. So if you use unyielding, it kind of just, you end up replacing the card anyway with Goten's ability, so you're fine. And then now here we go and use Vegeta's ability to pick up the energy, not placing one back down. And then we're just going to keep chipping away, chipping away his hand size. He's not going to be able to play cards that catch him up because he doesn't have access to something like Foreseeing Hit right now. He doesn't have access to Topo on his turn. So right now he's just playing all defense. And then we're just going to keep going after his red sources. Because at this point, we never want him to get double red. So we're just going ahead and play the Successor of Hope. Free Tutor. Fail to find. So from my position here, the things I have to think about now is how to set up my late game, which is pretty interesting to think about because it's the late game is something that you know I'm doing on two energy, two to three energy max across the course of the game. And so I have to figure out a way to get a Bardock Progenitor on board, swing, and then get a Bardock A bomb board, and then also have a scientist foo. So here we go again protecting the Goten. Because as of right now, it's free to do so. We just played a super combo for it. 
Go ahead and negate. This is the thing. So he plays a Digging Deep Vegeta, which is like rough. Because he's going to be able to attack the Goten, and if he takes the life, he'll untap, and it'll be like 20k, so he gets to kind of threaten him. So we spent one Backbone and one Roshi for the Goten already, and since he's playing the Digging Deep, which I should have been playing around anyway, like now it's just not worth the save at all. So now I wasted those two cards. So on my part, I definitely overextended when I should have just let it die, but I thought it was going to be safe for the turn. He attacks leader. I'll go down to three because he put himself down to three. So that kind of gives me the green light to do so because the game state is moving along. Now I just have to be more prepared if he plays a threat like Scientist Fu because that's like his only threatening one energy threat in the deck. So now we're going to go ahead and start trying to build a board. So we'll play a Bardock. We're going to go down to two. Gonna figure out a way to get an attacker that can do this without having to actually pick up my energy and run that play because we have to run that every single time because we need to keep them off red. So we're actually gonna swing with the Roshi here, and so if he had a negate right here, this would be a great time to do it because it's like obviously I'm on to something. So now there's a 20k Roshi. Coming at his face. <laughs> like, all because he didn't negate. And then now I'm going to get the extra value getting the 8 bump board. So it's like, anytime you see somebody, like, combo with a, like, or attack with a Roshi, like, you have to know something's up. But me, I had to do it to try and get the most value possible because I wanted to be able to do my leader swing to keep my engine going without having to sacrifice the energy for the turn. Because otherwise, if I do that, then I'm going to have to Bean, Bardock, all those things. There we go. Going after the red source again. And that's the thing. We're just going to keep him off red for the entirety of the game. As long as the game keeps going, that's all we're just going to do. So now we have a scientist view. We're going to start threatening with... We're going to go ahead and play. We just went ahead and dropped two successors from my hand. Only one Bardock left in the deck. And I think we go ahead and flute the Roshi here. Yep. Draw another Bardock Ape, so here we go. Just getting through the deck. And as you can see, the, the best part about the blue-yellow version is you maintain maintain hand size so much better. So since he beat this turn and his hand size is pretty decent size, we're just going to go after his board at this point. And just make it really difficult for him to do anything, to get anything started against this. And that's one thing about this deck is it's like, it's why I call it Apes and Taxes, is because like it's just this really annoying strategy that like you're just going to keep pressuring the opponent and you're just going to keep getting cards out of their hand you're going to keep them at two energy two to three energy max on their turns and so the game is just super grindy because you're making everyone just play incredibly fair so here's again he has to charge a red horse and that's another thing too like cards like foreseeing hit aren't playable kefla is not playable like and if he's off two red, he can never play. I mean, he, yeah, if he's off of two red, red energy, he can never never play burst attack. He can never play topo. Like, it's just gas. So he goes and combos an unbreakable. I'm gonna combo just to protect my life total because I really don't want to go down to one because I want to have access to playing another Bardock on my turn. He's gonna play a trunks. This is big. He's gonna put himself down to two, but again, at this point, he's, there's nothing. He, he's nothing he can do. Like he doesn't have an option. And then so here's me, like not playing around scientist view, which is hecka dumb. Because now I'm gonna have to go to blocks with my Bardock. It 
And me, I'm pretty much, like, I'm forced to combo over here. Because if I don't, I just lose everything. Which I don't want. I mean, that's another thing. It's just, like, awareness. Constant awareness of the game state, the board state. And, like, I should have just known he had that many cards in his discard pile. He's drawn so many cards in his deck. I should have known that a scientist food was coming. So now, I mean, I put myself in this position. Because I could have comboed over the intensifying power trunks with the cards that I had in hand. But instead, I had to waste, you know, a Roshi on board and then two extra cards in order to do so. We're still in a good spot, though, because it, our hand sizes are roughly equal. And I'm still going to be able to continue the lock. Now we're going to go ahead and play the Bardock. This is a pretty nifty play because what you do is you charge the actual bean itself and then you can just pick it back up and then use it. <laughs> so it's pretty nifty. We're just going to keep going face. Because if we keep pressuring him, he's not going to be able to use the intensifying power trunks anyway. So it's worth. We'll pick up a bean. We'll just go ahead and play the bean. And then combo the Bardock. So as you can see, this play is pretty sweet. Because it's like, we're going to go ahead and get the sensu bean value anyway. He's going to combo a combo on. So he's got a combo 5k more. So now we just got three cards out of his hand. That felt really good, especially after the play that we had just made. So we're kind of catching up. We'll go ahead and pop Mass Sand. Pop the first thing hitting his energy. And we're going to go ahead and just start getting cards in the discard pile so we can go ahead and get Scientist Foo down. Because now, since the game is winding down so much, his hand size is so low, we can start pushing. Now we get to do the thing that's as nice. You get the value gene, so you play the gene for free. You flute it, draw an extra card. Again, filling the discard pile up for Scientist Foo. More combo fodder in hand. We get to re we get to redo the free gene, the value gene. Here we go. And gates. We're gonna play this super conservatively since we we honestly like with cards in hand. We don't know if we can kill them. Piccolo. Gotta hate seeing that. Now I'm in the tank here trying to figure out if I want to combo, which I really, they're both defensive cards, and it's like, if I combo, I put him down to zero, but then if he top decks another threat that he can play, I'm pretty much just lost, so yeah, he has to combo since I'm going face, and I did no combo. So now we're just going to have shields up. We're at one life. We got four defensive cards, so the only thing I have to play around here is another scientist foo. Uh, only other thing he could do is play a Raging Sp Spirit Sun Gohan. Like, that's his only threat that he can hard cast. <laughs> He's going to charge another Zeno. Because it's, it's just a dead card. He's never going to see it. He's never going to get to that many energy. We got to go to blocks. It takes a life.
We'll go to blocks. This is an interesting play because honestly, he probably should have swung with the Gohan, fluted back to Gohan, replayed the Gohan to get the extra attack. Yeah, but he already had another Gohan anyway. So boom, there's the negate, slamming the door. Slamming the door on him. Locking the opponent at three energy is cool. We top deck. Do that. Pick up an energy. We're just going to go to 20. He's just going to play an unbreakable draw card. We'll go ahead and kill one of his energy to reduce his combo power if he has any. We go to 35. Ooh, another boost! Thirty-five. He should have comboed an extra card. Tilt. Game was heck a grindy. Well, guys, this was the first video from last night. I played a few more after this as well, uh, which I'll be posting over the next couple of days with uh, blue red versus blue green SS3 and then also blue red SS3 versus Trunksu Storm. But anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. K. Bye.